the final generation of N-Strike Elite. Nerf Elite is a big series in Nerf, probably the longest running series that they ever had. And there's so many blasters for it that if I were to review every single one and you were to watch them all, you'd probably be watching my terrible videos for the rest of your life. And while Elite certainly did have its fair share of wonderful gem blasters, such as the Rapid Striker, the Strife, blasters that everybody knows about and everybody remembers fondly, the last generations of Elite, generally when this kind of grip started getting introduced, things kind of went downhill a lot. Blasters generally started getting either gimmicky, repetitive, or just generally worse. For example, the Delta Trooper was a direct reskin of the Retaliator, and the Surge Fire was just really bad. Even the Trilogy, the big version of this blaster, has had plenty of controversy. Some people's worked great, but other people complain about it not working at all and jamming up catastrophically all the time. It's like, where did the quality control go? And let us of course not forget the elephant in the room. And then like a diamond in the rough, in the mix of all the terrible gimmicky blasters, poor quality products, and gimmicky rehashes, this one came out. And this blaster's concept looked so cool, but everybody was skeptical. At least I certainly was, because this was another fully automatic gimmicky blaster. And as... They don't usually turn out very good. As you can see, the Titan CS50 is really, really bad. And so I held off on getting the Infinis and completely missed out on it. Because just like a year after it launched, <coughs> gone, completely unfindable. No stores, not on Amazon, hardly any on eBay. It was like it never existed in the first place. And would you know, this year, it just so happened to reappear on Amazon. It reappeared on Amazon. And in some stores, but those stores are in Japan. But why is this blaster on this video? Why am I saying that this thing is the best elite blaster ever? That. Not only does this blaster come with a 30 dart drum, which is a pretty big deal in and of itself, and I'll explain why in a little while, but this blaster loads itself and it does it reliably. I cannot even begin to describe how angry I am at myself for not considering this blaster when it first came out because this not only is getting a spot on the wall, but this might be the blaster. This might be the one to replace the rapid strike on the wall. But before I go into all the reasons why I love this blaster, we gotta go objectively, start out with the ergonomics. First of all, this grip looks terrible. It is amazing. It is super comfortable. I would actually go so far as to say that this grip is more comfortable than the original Elite style grip. Why? Because you have these details, these kind of square rectangle things, which don't dig into your hand but provide a nice handhold. And the grip is very big. It's a rival-sized grip. You can get a good, comfy hand grip on this. And one definitely better than you could probably get on most other blasters. Definitely the Hyperfire. As for the foregrip, it's this big Dorito-style triangle foregrip, and it is wonderful. It feels great to put your hand on this. Let me explain why. If we take a look at the Hyperfire for reference, using the same 30 dart drum that came with the Infinis, you can see that it has this vertical foregrip grip right here or horizontal foregrip right here. Now it works, but let me explain the issue. Your hand has to be kind of at this awkward angle to hold onto it and it has to get past the side of the drum. It isn't too bad when using the 25 or 30 drum, but especially when you're using the 50 drum, it gets very cumbersome and hard to do that with. Now if we take a look at the Infinis, yeah, it just made a noise when I put that in. I'll explain that in a moment. But when you put your hand on this, you can see that it's at a natural angle. Your hand is automatically going to fit on that 45 degree angle anyways. And because the grip is so large and it's so high up, especially compared to the Hyperfires, your hand doesn't need to avoid anything. It's very comfortable to hold the foregrip of this blaster. Probably the most comfortable foregrip I've ever seen on any blaster ever. And I mean that. Sincerely. If we move back to the stock, you can see that it's a little bit short, but it isn't short 
nearly as much as some other blasters. You definitely have enough room for a good handhold, even if it isn't the best length imaginable. Considering this blaster's sort of compact design, I mean, in most dimensions it's compact, it is a very, very wide blaster, and there's a big reason for that, which is kind of hilarious, but I'll explain that later. But the stock is pretty comfortable. It does the job, and the back of the stock is very nice and comfortable to shoulder. So that's a plus. Putting your cheek on this is a little bit annoying because of the sling point, but if you put it a bit forwards onto this part, it is comfortable. The Infinis, like every other flywheel blaster, has three triggers. You can see this microscopic rev trigger. It's so cute, but it's also really bad and probably the worst thing about this blaster. The magazine release is about the same size, but it sticks out a little more, and it gets the job done. The main trigger, unlike the Hyperfire, is very smooth and very filleted and very nice to press in. It feels like the Rapid Strikes, but it's way more reliable. It's like the Rapid Strike design with the Hyperfire's reliability. Best of both worlds, literally. And just for good measure, thank you Hasbro, you have two tactical rails on the top and a barrel attachment on the front, so you can put barrels onto this. I don't know why they didn't put a barrel attachment on the Hyperfire, because that front muzzle thing could have definitely been a barrel attachment, but you know what, I've already talked about that before. This one has a barrel attachment, I'm very grateful for it. And how many sling points does this blaster have for the one Joe Schmo consumer who asked? It's got three. It's got one right here and two on the stock. So there you go. The one on the top of the stock seems kind of useless and it really only gets in the way, but I mean, if you're a modder, you're probably gonna hacksaw that off anyway. And this blaster features one of the coolest yet most simplistic designs out of any fully automatic blaster I've seen out of Hasbro. You've got this kind of middle area, which seems very basic. There's not too much detail going on in just this general area other than the Nerf logo, a couple little engraved details in the shell, and the occasional sort of black tactical piece right there. I don't know why I said it's tactical, it's just black, but it does look pretty cool. The Elite logo is engraved into the shell, which I very much like. The Infinis logo right there, I don't know why they didn't use that logo more. That is a super cool looking design, is right up there besides, oh boy. And then up at the front, it says Infinis. Here it says Nerf. You've got these lines here. The Tiger camo does it justice. I mean, yeah, this blaster looks awesome. And now for the moment, I'm sure many of you have been screaming at the camera waiting for, shut up and get to the exciting bits. What is the noise? I want you to close your eyes and imagine with me for a second. You're a scavenger. You're running around in the field, you've got your blaster, and you run completely out of darts. And you find darts in the field. What would you rather do? Load them into the mag or load them into the blaster? and then have those darts automatically deposit into your magazine. And yes, it works reliably. Not only does this blaster have a self-loading mechanism, but also features this indicator light on the back so that you can tell what you're, what's going on with your drum. You can see if you open the jam door, that light turns red so you can't fire it. If it's closed and you have darts, it turns green, and when you run out of darts, it'll be yellow. The indicator light is pretty cool, but also kind of a little setback because it is very bright. That is a bright LED that they've got in there. It will turn off after two minutes, but if you're in the dark, it's gonna give away your position. And just for good measure, in case the dart doesn't go all the way in, it doesn't go all the way in. You can see it's still stuck there. When you shove in another dart, it'll load both, mainly because it's basically four sets of flywheels that are in there pushing the dart along. So if there's already a dart in there, the previous set of flywheels will just keep the last dart on hold until the next one is deposited, then advance the dart forward. I don't know what kind of fail safes they've got going on in here, but this is actually a super reliable mechanism that has not failed on me once. And I've been testing this thing all week and I've been doing my best to jam this thing and I literally am, am incapable of jamming it. So that should say something. The closest thing I could say I've had an issue with this is the fact that waffle head darts are completely flat tipped and they give a lot of friction on this funnel thing. So if the dart isn't aligned properly, it could get stuck on the corners of the funnel or on the sides. However, if you're using elite darts, which I don't know why you would be using those, 
it funnels perfectly and you can literally just shove darts in. I mean, I don't know why I'm trying this without the magazine, but yeah, with waffle heads, it takes a little bit of precision. So that's definitely worth noting since you're probably gonna be using waffle heads with this. Now the first 15 shots, I'm going to do single shot and then the second 15, I'm gonna show you fully automatic so that you can see the rate of fire of this blast. So let's get into this. You can see when I'm empty, the light turns yellow. Pretty useful. Now, while that is pretty cool, but it doesn't say much about the blaster's performance. I mean, you can see it basically has the same rate of fire as the rapid strike, a little bit faster, roughly rhino fire rate of fire, but not too much to say there. Now, the performance. It punches more than 70. It punches 75 to 80. Six. 83.6 out of a stock fully automatic elite blaster. The biggest and most major setback I had with the hyperfire was the fact that the performance was getting 50s to mid 60s. The performance out of the hyperfire sucks stock. It needs to be modified to be good. Not the Infinis. The Infinis punches harder than any other Elite Blaster I own. Now this blaster, I really need to talk about the rate of fire really quick before I say anything else about it. When I made my Rapid Strike video, I said that the rate of fire was outdated, but I didn't really consider what the rate of fire actually means nowadays. Because with a fully automatic blaster, you have to be in the range of practical and tactical. Because if your rate of fire is too fast, you're just wasting ammunition. But if it's too slow, then you're wasting time. And I didn't really think to consider that maybe a little bit faster than the Rapid Strike would be the Goldilocks ratio rate of fire. This blaster nails the rate of fire perfectly. I don't know if the Rapid Strike does this as well, but this blaster features a kind of user-controlled electronic trigger. If you push this down for even a millisecond, like whoop, it'll still auto advance one dart through the flywheels. So yeah, it works. You can semi-automatic this all day, every day. Now it's time for the burning question. The one that's been eating away at me since I got this blaster in the first place. Would I consider this the best elite blaster ever released? Uh, it's really, really hard because while this is definitely my favorite blaster in my collection to do pretty much anything with, is it for everybody? Is it going to be as well received among everybody else as I say it is? Because I really have to reflect on my opinion and ask myself, how worth it is the $70 price tag being asked for this? You gotta remember, this isn't the only flywheel fully automatic blaster in the Elite series. And think about the Turbine, the Hyperfire, the Rapid Strike. All three of those are cheaper than this by roughly $30. The extra $30 premium is exclusively going into that automated magazine loading mechanism. If you're not gonna use that, this is literally just a really expensive rapid strike. And I can definitely see some people being disappointed in this when they see the rate of fire and it isn't as good as the hyperfires because that's what makes the hyperfire so much fun is the ridiculous fast rate of fire. When they see rapid strike rate of fire, it could, it could be very disappointing because you paid $70 for this blaster. Just taking a quick break from filming to clean up my Nerf darts. Just taking a quick break to clean up my Nerf darts. I'll, 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 I'll review this next week. But here's another thing to question. An automated like electronic magazine loading mechanism in my eyes would be worth $30 all by itself because loading magazines is a pain especially when you're like on the field and you have your blaster equipped and you need to you need to shoot fast and you can't because your mags are empty so you have to run around and pick up nerf darts on the floor having something like this where you can simultaneously shoot and load is beyond convenient and very very useful 
While this mechanism isn't as fast as loading all the darts by hand, if you were like going turbo speed and able to effectively load mags fast, I still would consider this very useful because you can get a lot more darts in while still shooting. That literally solves the one problem with magazine-fed blasters, is having to take the magazine out and reload it later. If you never had to take the magazine out and you could still load it while you were shooting, well, there you go, you can basically be shooting forever. Of course you need short pauses in between darts just to load the magazine in because it can't do everything at the exact same time, that would be ridiculous. But the time spent putting a dart in and shooting it is way shorter than taking the mag out, putting a dart in, putting the mag in, starting to rev the blaster again, and then shooting it. Yeah. So, in my eyes, as a stock blaster, this is the best blaster they've come up with in the Elite series. I seriously, really, really am in love with this. I am so mad at myself for not giving it a chance before because it was in the new generation of Elite blasters. It just, it, it couldn't possibly be good, right? No, it's good. And if you were torn between this and the Titan CS50 and you got the Titan CS50, oh, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. You wasted all your money and all your time. The last thing I want to address is the 30 dart drum. I'm not gonna go too long because this video is already way longer than it needs to be, but this drum is very useful. You have a capacity that is close to the 35 dart drum, but the 35 dart drum is on one side. This one's symmetrical. So you can basically have the same as the 35 dart drum, but with a symmetrical design and not being nearly as big as the 50 drum. This drum is only a little bit bigger than the 25 drum, so arguably I'd say it would theoretically be the best drum to put in blasters. It's a shame it only came up with it only came with this blaster. Anyways, if you would like to pick up an Infinis, I will link it. I will link it in the description so you can get it off of Amazon. With that said, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Like if you enjoy, and comment down below what blaster you'd like to do a video on next, or you'd like me to do a video on next. Why can't I speak? I'll see y'all next time. Bye.